Hello, this is Mrs. Simmons. I'm here today to talk about some basic literary terms, and these really are basic. They're things that might actually be review for you, and that's totally fine. The biggest thing here is that you do know them because we will be working with them and deepening our understanding of them and our application of them throughout the entire school year, especially for AP literature. Our first term is perspective. So perspective is how narrators, characters, or speakers understand their circumstances. It's informed by their background, their personality traits, their biases, their relationships. Essentially, it's how they view the world. So when we talk about characterization in my other video, we're talking about just how do we figure out what kind of person they are. Perspective is how they view the world. This is shaped and revealed by their relationships with other characters, with the environment, with the events, with the ideas and themes that is expressed in the text, all of those things make a difference in the perspective that a character might have, and then that also informs how we analyze them as a character. Our next term, very simply, is setting. You should know this. It's the time and place of the action of a written piece, so when it takes place, where it takes place. In addition to all of this, it includes larger historical and cultural contexts that we need to know about because that really does form the background for a narrative and can actually inform the choices the author makes, the characters make, things like that. So sometimes when we when a character makes a decision that we don't understand or don't agree with, we have to remember that the society they live in, the time period they live in, is completely different from ours, and we need to try and have some empathy and understanding for why they do what they do. Then there's plot, another very basic element. It's the sequence of events. These events are connected. They tend to build on each other, so one thing happens in this thing, and that's cause and effect. The dramatic situation of that narrative really includes the setting and the action. And then we also have to consider how that narrative develops um, placing characters in conflict. Like, how does it continue and compound the situations the characters are in? And then how can that inform their characterization? It also often involves the rising or falling fortunes of a main character or a set of characters. So the function of plot is really to focus our attention on what matters most uh, to its development, and that development isn't just plot, it's the development of characters, of their relationships, of their roles in the narrative, and their roles in the setting. And it also helps focus our attention on the relationship between characters and setting, because that can be symbolic, as you read in Foster's How to Read Literature Like a Professor. The really basic plot elements that you do need to know, the first is exposition, this is the beginning of the story where characters and setting are established, where that conflict is introduced, and once that is all set, we get into rising action, where there are a series of events, so multiple events, usually take some time, and all of this builds up to the conflict. Essentially, these events complicate the um, conflict, they add excitement or tension or crisis, and they help us really see that there's a purpose to all of this, and it's, it's leading somewhere. And that somewhere is the climax, and that's the main point of the plot. This is where there's a turning point, a moment of really high interest and emotion, and it really leaves the reader wondering, you know, what is going to happen next? That next becomes the falling action. And that's where we see the winding up of the story, the resolution of events and conflicts, and ultimately that all ends at the resolution, also known as the denouement. This is the end of the story. It can be happy, it can be tragic, it can be all kinds of things. It can leave loose ends, but nonetheless there is some form of resolution. Then we get into conflict, another critical element and basic element of literature, and this is the struggle between two opposing forces. Usually we call those the protagonist and the antagonist from the Greek. Protagonist is the main character of the story. Um, they do not have to be a good person. They can be a complicated, you know, good and bad person. They could be just your classical hero. They could be a normal person. They could be a tragic hero. They could be an anti-hero, which is your protagonist who's not a good person. <laughs> so the protagonist does not have to be good. They are simply our main character. The antagonist is the character that opposes the protagonist, often considered a villain, um, but it can be something inside the protagonist that keeps him or her from doing what they want to do. Often the antagonist is a foil, that's an important term to know, uh, which is really a character that has cr contrasting qualities, so they have direct opposites from our protagonist. I also want to stress that the antagonist can be nature, <laughs> that's something to consider, it doesn't have to be a person. So then we do have two types of conflict. We have internal conflict and external conflict. Internal conflict is psychological conflict within the main character. Usually they're experiencing two opposite emotions or desires, like they have uh, the desire to be good, 
but they still have moments of evil, and we typically call this man versus self. External conflict is always outside of the character, so the character versus something external. Uh, man versus man or woman, man versus nature, man versus society and society structures, man versus machine, so it could be technological in nature, and there's man versus fate or the supernatural. Man versus fate we would see in things like classical Greek tragedies like Oedipus. Then there's narration. Narration, um, we use the term narrator for fiction and speaker for poetry. That's an important distinction that I'd like you to have, especially for AP literature. Um, and these two relate accounts to the readers. They establish a relationship between the text and the reader, and they help us actually get into the story. So we've already talked a little bit about perspective, but I want to reiterate that it's how narrators, characters, or speakers see their circumstances, their, their perspective on what's happening to them, how they view these things. And point of view is a little different because it refer refers to the position from which a narrator or speaker relates the events of that narrative. So how are we watching the characters interact? How are we watching uh, and learning about their perspectives? So narrators may be characters, and their role as a character may influence their perspective. For example, in The Great Gatsby, our narrator is Nick, and he is a character in the story. And we get this kind of unreliable narrator where we have to figure out at what point do we trust him or not trust him. Um, I also have this little side note at the bottom. It says the speaker and narrator is not necessarily the author. That's very important. When it comes to poetry, I'll talk about this a little bit more later, um, not in this video, <laughs> uh, is that we have to understand that the speaker in a poem is not necessarily our writer. Um, sometimes, certainly, but not always, and it's important that we make that distinction. So then we get into point of view. Um, this contributes to what narratives, characters, or speakers can and cannot provide. So what do they actually know? What can they actually tell us about the story, about our characters, things like that? Because it really determines and is based on, you know, how involved are they in the story? How intimate are they with the details, the events, or the characters in the story? They might be very intimate, a best friend of a main character. Or perhaps they are uh, completely removed and they can see everything happening in the story. All of that's really important because it, again, affects our ability to understand multiple characters or just one character. So then the, the types of point of view, we have first person and third person. Those are our basic ones in literature that we'll be dealing with. A first person is a, a character who is involved in the narrative, like Nick in The Great Gatsby. Their relationship to the events of the plot and other characters shapes their perspective. It, it shapes how they view the things that are happening. Again, Nick is unreliable. We see it through his perspective and not through, say, Gatsby or Daisy's perspective. This narration uses personal pronouns, so I, me, my, things like that. I saw that Gatsby was at the end of his dock, that sort of thing. Third person, however, is an outside observer, someone who's not necessarily a character in the story and who is not affected at all by the narrative's events. Their knowledge about events and characters might range from just observational, like I just noticed these things, this is what's happening, to kind of all-knowing, godlike in some ways, and that shapes their perspective. So there are two types of third person that you need to know. The first one is third person limited, and this is where it typically follows one character exclusively. It's not in the minds and actions and thoughts of others. And then there's third person omniscient, where that narrator knows the thoughts, feelings, and actions of pretty much every character, very godlike in a sense. So, those are some basic concepts. Thanks for watching, and come prepared to class with these notes so that we can discuss them and start applying them immediately. Thanks, guys!